Hello and welcome back to the St. Michael Podcast, Season 2, Episode 16. And today we're here with Miss Luna. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Good. So how long have you been teaching at St. Michael's? This is my second year teaching at St. Michael. I've been teaching music for the past year and a half. And this year is the first time I've also been working in the library. So um, what were you doing before you came to St. Michael's? Before St. Michael's, I took a year off after my daughter was born. And I stayed home with her and did all those fun stay-at-home mom things, Um, but before that, I taught for Greenfield Central Schools for six years as a music teacher, kindergarten through third grade. So what grades do you teach for music here at St. Michael's? Here I teach preschool through eighth grade, so I get everybody in the building between library and music at least twice a week. So how did the Dinosaurs program go? I thought it went really great this year. It was a fun experience for the kids to get up there, be in costume, be a little bit silly, and uh, put on a show for our parents here. What do you think about the Advent programs? I think they went really well this year as well. I liked that um, the eighth graders got to write the show this year. It gave them something a little extra special to do um, and kind of gives each class uh, that writes it in years in the future a little bit something special to look forward to right and what do you think about the um the split between the two different grades how do you think that i think that works and i think it works um pretty good i really think it would be awesome if we could have everybody together um, so those younger kids have something to look up towards as they get older and uh, maybe they're thinking to themselves, man, I really want to be Mary when I'm an eighth grader. I want to be Joseph or I want to be one of the three wise men. Um, but at this point, I think it works really well. It gives uh, each grade separation some more time in the spotlight and things like that. So Yeah, and it's also nice having uh, more space in the gym for Uh, more people to be in there. That's true. We get a lot, a lot of people for the younger performance, so it does give us some extra space. So um, what is something that's important to you in, like, preparing the students for the performance? I think it's really important to have plenty of class time where we can practice all of our songs together so that the kids feel really confident going on stage. They know all the words. They know all the notes, so they're not nervous or have any stage fright due to um, lack of knowledge. And I think it's also really important for us to all practice together in the gym so they get to hear what it sounds like with multiple grades and not just themselves. Right. So we have another musical coming up. Uh, Do you want to kind of give us a little bit information about that? Yeah. Our extracurricular musical is coming up this Friday, April 14th. Um, at 6 p.m. and it's a dessert theater which is a first for St. Michael. Um, Yeah it's gonna be really exciting. It's called the Phantom of the Music Room. So what was your idea behind the dessert theater? Um, I really wanted to bring these special events back home to St. Michael, make it uh, something that's really special that only our school does in the area. Um, It gives us the ability to be in our building and uh, maybe some families that are considering coming to St. Michael, they can see something that's really special that our school does. Um, Yeah, so that's why we thought and have a dessert theater to make it extra special. Everybody loves a good sweet treat. So we as tech team are recording your um, musical. Um, So, but it's not going to be recorded presented live on our YouTube stream. Right. So how can people watch the musical and participate in the dessert? Um, If people are listening now and want to call in and get tickets. Yeah, you can call directly to the office and they can get tickets uh, home with your kid that day. You can pay with credit cards, send in some cash, say in, uh, there's a form online you can fill out for how many tickets you want. They are $10 for individual tickets or $25 for up to a family of four. And all of that money goes directly back into St. Michael's Arts Department to grow our Advent programs, our our other musicals throughout the year, and um, make them something really big and special for our school. So I kind of want to go back to, um, like, getting the students ready. Um, So you guys have practices a few times a week? Yeah. 
We've been practicing two or three days a week for the past two months for this show. And um, the kids have been working here in class, but they've also been amazing at going home and all of the information is posted in their Google Classroom. So I can definitely tell they're going home and practicing themselves. And then here at school, we do it all together with our set and our microphones and um, yeah, practice here in the music room. And this week we start our practices in the gym with our stage and curtains and things. So do you think the students are prepared and ready for the show? I do. I think they are totally ready. We're just waiting to get, we're, we're itching to get on stage and put it all together. Yeah. Um, so now we've kind of talked a little bit about the musicals here at St. Michael's. Um, do you want to kind of describe, you know, the, how music class works here? Yeah, we do a lot of general music. So a lot of learning um, the music staff, how music is created. My favorite thing to teach basically is the composition of music. So we start composing all the way down in preschool up until eighth grade. And it looks a little bit different in a preschool class versus an eighth grade class, but it's really important that the kids understand how music is created before they start creating the music. Um, so I like for them to learn the theory and things behind that. We play a lot of instruments, we do a lot of games, a lot of folk dance. Um, yeah. So what are some of the instru instruments that the students get to play here? We use a lot of what are called ORF instruments, which was uh, created by a man named Carl ORF. He's pretty famous in the music education world. and. A lot of them are unpitched instruments like triangles and drums and things because beat is the basis of all music. So we start with those and then we use our glockenspiels and xylophones as well as we have some floor pianos that the kids play and practice on as well. All right, well, that's about all the time we have for today. So thank you so much for coming in. And I'd like to thank you everybody for listening to the podcast and God bless.